Welcome to episode four of Road to the Race. Today I thought I would do a Q&A. Um, it went over really well last year, so I thought I would do another one this year because um, lots of you have had questions as far as my bike and this year's race. So let's get to it. For me, it was the ability to compete. Um, obviously, I can't uh, compete in MMA just yet. Um, it's not here in the U.S. as far as people uh, in wheelchairs um, being able to fight and do competition. So being able to um, race was just a perfect opportunity for me. It was something that I could do. Um, another question that kind of goes along with that that a lot of people ask is, do you compete with other cyclists in these races? And the answer is no. Um, and I would not want to do that. And that's no offense to anyone who does do races with other hand cyclists and things like that. But to me, the playing field is already even when you have other racers in hand cycles versus when it's a person in a hand cycle um, up against someone who is a runner and who is using their legs. Um, I take great delight in the fact that I can run the same race as somebody who is running um, with my hand cycle and still beat them uh, using my arms. So to me, that's where the competition is. Um, it's trying to beat people who are at, I guess some people would say I'm at a disadvantage, but to me, that's all about competition is having, you know, being the underdog, so to speak, and then being able to kind of pull it out and, um, you know, beat people that other people didn't think you would beat. So for me, that's where the hand cycling comes in at um and, and why i wanted to do that versus um you know surfing and mma and i love both of those you know surfing was my first love mma uh became a second close one um but cycling is also up there too because it gives me the ability to compete Until I started racing last year, I really didn't know anyone on like the racing slash running circuit, but I started Googling some people and some races and I came across one named Sally McRae. Um, she lives out in California and she runs like 100 milers, 135 milers. Um, so my little rinky dink 5k would be easy peasy to her. Uh, but she's just amazing. You can check her out at sallymccrae.com. There's also, uh, you need to watch a video um, on YouTube called um, Western Time is one. So if you YouTube Sally McRae Western Time, it'll pull up. Um, and you also need to YouTube Sally McRae Crewing States. That would really give you an idea of who she is as a person and who she is as an athlete. Uh, she's also a Christian, so I look up to her a lot because of that, because her faith, if you know her story, her faith really plays into her running and why she does what she does. Uh, so I just think she's a super cool person. Um, one of the things that I recently came across was that she does consults for like uh, racers and runners, and basically you can pay to have a two-hour Skype session with her, and she will help you come up with a, a racing plan, um, nutrition, mental um, mental things to do if you're preparing for a race, which is something that I definitely want to take advantage of here pretty soon. So I'm excited about that. So go check her out. Sally McRae um, on Instagram, she's Sally McRae. On Twitter, she's Sally McRae. And then you can check her out at sallymccrae.com. I pretty much bought my bike uh, as is. Everything was pretty much how it needed to be. Um, the only change that I made really was I brought the foot pedals up just a little bit, like the foot rest up just a little bit. Um, and then I also bought a like a knee wedge off of Amazon because what I noticed was starting to happen. My, my knees turn in naturally, like when I sit. So that was causing uh, my legs to rub up against the side of the bike and it was causing some uh, pressure sores and things like that on my knees. So I bought this knee wedge and um, my dad actually put some Velcro on it and then also put a strip of Velcro on the bike so that when I 
go to sit in it and I stick the knee wedge in between, it's not going to go anywhere. It's going to stay. And it's worked, it's worked perfect. We also put a strap on it. So it straps around. Uh, we put the strap around the wedge and it goes around my knees and then it hooks underneath my seat. Um, so it's not going anywhere and it helps me with balance and things like that. So that's really the only thing I had to do to the bike. Other than that, I bought it as is. I didn't go out and get a racing coach. I mean, I feel like if I were to do like a hundred mile or something like that, I would definitely need a racing coach. Um, but the only coaches per se that I had for this race and last year, the same ones, um, my personal trainer at Fitness World, she helped me as far as the weight training and things like that. And then I had, of course, my um, MMA coach, Jerome. And we worked on, you know, just uh, strength and endurance training. So those were the two that, you know, were my main coaches. And then also Coach Desmond and Coach Don, they filled in as needed. Like if, if Jerome was out, you know, on vacation or something like that, they would fill in. So I really didn't have any race specific coaches, but they knew exactly like Crystal and Jerome knew exactly what I needed to work on to be able to run the race that I needed to and to be able to do this race as well. I train on Thursdays with weight training and Saturday and Sunday um, was usually my MMA training but what we did was practice like strength, uh, strength and conditioning and endurance, um, those three things. So Really, I train um, two to three times a week uh, last year and this year. This year, unfortunately, I've only trained for six months versus last year, which I trained literally the entire year um, to be able to do it. And, and that's only because I was sick a lot uh, this past year, just with upper respiratory infections, pneumonia, those types of things and it just didn't allow me to be on the bike so I didn't get as much training this year as I would have liked to um but the one of the other things that we did different this year was we focused a lot on the hills because that was what slowed me down a little bit last year and I have no gears on my bike so it's all upper body so that's really what we focused on a lot this year because I know that's what's coming um, and I still think I'm going to have to have Curtis give me a little nudge some up the hills, but I, I, I've gained a lot of strength this year, so I think it's going to be a lot better than it was last year. So those are the only things that are different between this year's race and, and last year's. <laughs> I don't really have one song that's a particular workout jam. I have a, a whole playlist, actually. Um, that I'm going to try to play during the race itself, but I have been practicing with this playlist as well. Um, and it's got some of the songs on there are um, ones from Imagine Dragons, um, like Thunder, and then I have ACDC and uh, Van Halen. I'm a huge Van Halen fan. Um, so I've got Humans Being on there. Um, I've got jump, I've got, you know, those types of things. So it's a, it's a huge playlist. Um, I listen to a lot of classic rock, so that's usually what gets me, gets me pumped and gets me motivated. Favorite cheat meal, uh, would have to be pizza. Oh my goodness. I'm a sucker for pizza. I'm a sucker for sweets. Um, in the past month, I haven't had, I haven't been able to have any of that. I've cut out um, bread, sodas, sweets, all that stuff. So my favorite cheat meal, um, which I haven't done in the last month, I haven't had a cheat meal in the last month. Um, but you know, I can't wait until the Friday after the race because I'm gonna have Papa John's pizza, uh, and it's gonna be a chicken and bacon pizza. That's what I like, or either pepperoni. I haven't quite decided. Those are like my two favorites. But yes, pizza is definitely a cheat meal for me. I hope I do better on the hills this year, and I hope that I'm a lot faster this year than I was last year. Last year I did it in 42 minutes. 
This year, I'd like to do it anywhere between 35 and 40. Um, as long as I don't go over 42, I'll be happy. I think one of the new things that I've learned about myself is that your brain is going to tell you that you're tired before your body is actually tired. Um, and that, that was something very interesting to me, which that's what, um, for those of you that have followed me for a long time, you know, I'm a huge fan of Jessamyn Duke. And that was one of the, um, that was one of the pieces of advice that she gave me was she said, wit, you're, your, your brain's going to tell you you're done before your body's actually ready to be done. And, I, and last year, it was definitely true. My brain was, the last mile to half a mile, my brain was going, all right, you need to quit. It's time to rest. Um, and then the other part of me knew, like, no, you still got a mile to a half a mile to go. You know, come on, get with it. And being able to kind of push past that was, I think that's the most incredible feeling of, a person can have and I think that's why a lot of people race is to see how far you know can I push it and I know I mean I know my limits but it was nice to have that feeling last year of oh my goodness I'm so tired I'm ready to be done and then pushing yourself and crossing that finish line and beating some avid runners in the process you know I, I think that's cool is when you when you can show yourself that hey you know you can do it and and you belong out here you know I think I think pushing past what your body says and what your brain says you're not capable of is absolutely huge. This is going to sound kind of like a duh moment, but definitely get, definitely training. Um, you can't just say, oh, I'm going to run this race and go out there and run the race without training properly, without eating properly, without making some diet changes, um, there, there's just no, there's just no way, so, you know, getting in the gym, at least get a personal trainer, tell them what your goals are, tell them what you want to do, so that they can help you, you know, nutrition wise, um, workout wise, because you have to prepare for this, you can't just, there's no way you can just go in and, and expect to do well, um, you pretty much have to make a lifestyle change. So you don't actually have to hire a coach. You could just, you know, hire a personal trainer or at least someone who's done some races before and could tell you how they prepared and how they worked out is, is what I would suggest. Um, and then don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it um, because I, I, I never thought that I would be able to come in at 42 minutes. I thought it was going to be an hour was was what I had originally, you know, planned for myself. Um, but no, you know, I did it in 42 minutes. So I know if I can do it, someone else can do it as well.